The Book of Genesis Part 46 The Book of Genesis Part 46 James Gunn We must now fix the attention which we had centered on Abraham upon his less colorful son, Isaac. In many respects we shall not find the biography of Isaac as interesting and fruitful as that of his father. Psychologically speaking, the second among these patriarchs of Israel was a negative personality, lacking in the heroic virtues of fortitude and valor. Isaac was a pacifist and enjoyed peace, and that sometimes at too great a price. In the passage before us we have a threefold picture of this child of promise. We see him, first in his sorrow, then in his home, and finally in the community. In his sorrow, 25 and it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac. Isaac had been bereft of his father, but not of his God. As he left the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron at Mamre, he must indubitably have felt lonely. All his half-brothers were far removed from him, and he who had been the inspiration of his life lay cold in death. Under such circumstances a feeling of emptiness and isolation may have gripped him. Isaac, like many another, proved in that hour the power of the presence of God. How real and blessed are the promises of God to tried and grief-stricken hearts! Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, yeah, I will help thee, yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness, Isaiah 41 verse 10. In all probability, the statement, God blessed. Isaac, is explained and expanded in the verses that follow. God's blessing was the perpetuating of the Abrahamic covenant through Isaac, the propagating of the messianic line through him. The blessing of God to Isaac was therefore the experiential enjoyment of the eternal purposes of God. When we were studying Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac in chapter 22, we saw them to be an illustration of God the Father and the Son in the work of redemption at Calvary. Isaac is not to be viewed in that sense now, he is a believer, enjoying at times the blessings of the Lord, and manifesting at other times the weaknesses of the flesh. In his home, 25-12-34 It is with mixed feelings that we investigate the home life of Isaac, there are some very commendable features, but there are also some very questionable traits about Abraham's son. A childless home, possibly we have noticed among our acquaintances the effect of a childless home. Such a home lacks a peculiar vivacity and cheerfulness which permeate the family where there are little children. This is not the only reason why Hebrew families regret deeply a childless marriage. It is the hope of every loyal Hebrew wife that she may be the mother of the long-looked-for Messiah. As we think of Isaac and Rebekah in the Old Testament, we also think of Zacharias and Elizabeth in the New. Both these couples longed for children and prayed to God that such a blessing might be theirs. God heard their prayers, and a boy was born to these respective praying parents, two boys which became two of the greatest men in all the annals of human history. The expectant mother, in the case of Elizabeth, there were certain conditions which produced a deep inward joy, and which led her, under the Holy Spirit's power, to prophesy. In the case of Rebecca, certain conditions produced fear and doubt and forced her to go and inquire of the Lord. Rebecca in so doing was not only to learn something about her two boys, but also to learn something about the sovereignty of God. From subsequent events one must assume that she learned her lesson well, and while she may have used, unnecessarily, wrong methods to accomplish the divine will, it is obvious that she knew it. To Rebecca the Lord predicted concerning the two boys, the elder shall serve the younger. It must have been apparent to her that God intended to reverse the order of nature in the imparting of the patriarchal blessing and birthright. We cannot excuse this mother for her deception, nevertheless, we must admit that she is to be commended for accepting the will of God. We know that centuries later the words of God to Rebecca are used by the Spirit of God to teach us the truth of election. The prophet Malachi records the words of the Lord, Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith the Lord, Yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau, Malachi 1 verses 2-3. In dealing with the profound subject of sovereign election, the Apostle Paul quotes the very message of God to Rebekah as a proof of God's supreme choice, and not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth winky face.
It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, Romans 9 verses 10 to 12. The family, it is impossible to consider Isaac's family life to be a completely happy one. There evidently was a vivid contrast between the parents and also between the two brothers. When the twins were born, they were named after their different appearances. Esau received his name because he was red-haired and shaggy, Jacob received his because he caught his brother by the heel, a heel holder or supplanter. Isaac, naturally quiet and easygoing, was attracted by the more reckless and adventurous Esau, whereas, ambitious, active Rebekah found her delight in the clever, plain tent dweller, home-loving, Jacob. We have a proverb, opposite poles attract, such apparently was the case here. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. It is strange we trust each other, only doubt our Lord, take the word of fellow mortals, yet distrust his word. Oh, what wondrous, joyous light would shine throughout our days, if we always would remember, he means just whatever he says. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. If the Lord will, we will journey, if the Lord will, we will stay, oh, for grace at every turning, if the Lord will still to say.